qualifiers this weekend, lads, after the big provincial finals last weekend. Still two huge games um, in the qualifiers. It's the, it's the qualifier before the kind of All-Ireland quarterfinals, um, if you like. Hey, the big question here, Connell, is can any of these four teams win the All-Ireland? Like, when you look at it, you have Clare and Waterford going for four games in four weeks to reach the final, five and five. And then you'll have Galway and Cork going for three games in four weeks, four and five to win the All-Ireland. Like, I mean, it is a tough, tough schedule, which just go like the prize for winning your provincial or even getting to the final really is huge. Yeah, it is massive. But look, you're getting a second chance, so they, they'll take it. Uh, can they? Can one of the teams win it? Yeah, of course they can. It's going to be very difficult. Um, a lot will come into it, obviously, you know, Injuries is going to be a huge part of it, and and the quality of your squ- of your squad that you're going to have because you're not going to be getting through the these number of games with 16, 17 players. You're going to have to use nearly your your whole <coughs> squad, um, and who has the big, biggest squad and 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 less injuries is, is really going to be keyed into it. But to answer quickly to your question is yes, they probably can. One of those Clare Go- Clare Cork Galway Waterford could could go and win it. Now look, Galway have had a bit of a break now, and, and Waterford have, a, have okay, they had a bit of a break. They played Leash last game, which was a relatively tough game, but. I'd, I'd say they're relatively fresh enough and and ready to go. Like um, and they're delighted to be still in the championship. Really, I think that's it, uh, Damien. Beggars can't be choosers. You'll just take whatever you can get. But I think from the Clare Waterford point of view, they're going you know five wi- five wins in five weeks to win an All Ireland. Probably more difficult for them. Galway <coughs> and Cork a little bit. There's a chance there. Yeah, well, Colm, I I have a little bit of an issue with with it, uh, with the draw and with the format in this scenario that. And I'm talking about my own county here. I don't think Galway or Cork should have got a buy. That's my own opinion. Whatever way the system or the fixtures have to be done, I don't think they should have got a buy. I think when you're coming out of the qualifiers, that it should be level play for everyone like this. So you take Clare. If Clare are to win in All Ireland, right? Uh, I think they have to play something like nearly as a five Sundays in a row or five weekends in a row uh, to try win. Like Clare are going into their fourth game. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but well, Galway are going into their second. Galway and Cork should be playing someone. I don't know whether it will be in a, a, a West Mead team or whoever. I don't off the, I don't care, right? It, there should have been a level playing field that everyone is on. Like you're saying there, Galway have got a rest. Like, and they did get a rest. Like this, where, they, for example, they're playing Waterford the weekend. And Waterford would have got some knocks against Leash because that was actually a very difficult game. And Leash could have nearly toppled them, right? But I just think it should have been a level playing field that everyone was playing the same amount of matches going through the qualifier system. And I think it was an unfair system where Cork again got a, a week as well off to manage uh, injuries and all that. Now they're going player to player who Clare played last week. I just find it unfair. And I, I think whatever system is going forward for next year, it shouldn't happen again. Everyone should be playing the same amount of games, level playing field, and let everyone be on at the same scratch level. I think the, I think a lot of people in Clare were disappointed that they beat Waterford Connell in in the Munster Championship and then they lost Yeah. and Galway and Cork beat no one Yeah. and they got the buys where Clare didn't I think that's what yeah. Damien Yeah that's Damien's point I, look <clears> I suppose it, it's, a, it's a good point if everyone starts at the same time and maybe it's time to, to, to look at that and take the buys out of it and like it's nearly a disadvantage sometimes to get the buy you know, years ago I would have been delighted to get straight into a, maybe a, a semi-final but now you currently want the games to get the team settled and get going and if you do get beaten uh you know, you can you can kind of regroup a little bit, but yeah, it, it nearly is a disadvantage now the way it is. Yeah, maybe it is. Mayor Damien, I'm going to throw this one to you. This is the Galway Enigma. Um, and this is a piece with, from Martin Brehany in The Independent. There's some incredible statistics in this and how much Galway win at underage level, minor and 21 at club level. So I'm just going to read some out. I was, I was blown away when I read it. This is since 1990. Yeah. Only Kilkenny have won more under 21 titles. Galway have won as many All-Ireland senior club titles as Kilkenny, Tipperary, Cork, Limerick, Clare combined in the same period. It leaves them with 31 titles at club, inter-county minor, under 21, 8 ahead of Kilkenny, 22 ahead of Tipperary, 24 ahead of Cork and Clare and 25 ahead of Limerick. He says those are astonishing figures showing that of the 93 titles in those three categories, Galway took exactly one third. One third of them dwarfing every other county in the, in the entire country. And then, in the same period, Galway have only won one senior All-Ireland. Kilkenny have won 13, Tipperary 5, Cork 4, Clare 3, um, two each for Limerick and Offaly. Isn't that a head-scratcher, Damien, when you see how much Galway are completely dominating those very important grades, minor under 21 and club, and yet it's, it's, it's one All-Ireland? 
<laughs> yeah, it's 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 a question that's been asked a long uh, a lot of times, so it hasn't. It is it is you know, but the answer to the question is, Colm, that we should have won some All Irelands that we didn't win. Like I always give the example of twenty twelve, we should have won the All Ireland, and we didn't. And I know it's a head scratcher saying, well, how come we didn't? We didn't. We didn't win it, and we should have. Oh uh, five against um, against Cork. I felt we had a team that time good enough to win in All Ireland, and we didn't. We just didn't. Regarding the whole club scene, like this, the the teams that won club All Ireland with uh, for Galway, would say, and I include our own teams. They were phenomenal club teams, and I and I do believe that we had club teams that no other counties had. Now Ballyhale, with the exception in in Kilkenny, they have a phenomenal club team. But club hurling in Galway was just unbelievably strong. And and the second thing is, Colm, the club hurling in Galway was probably nearly taken too serious at stage, where there's other counties that their club hurling isn't taken as serious. And even you take some club players, don't put in performances for the club because they don't really have that major interest uh, in their clubs, where in Galway, club is a huge thing. But the answer to the question is, the stats speak for themselves. We have won All-Ireland minors. We have won on under-21s. We have won club at Ireland. And we haven't done it at senior level. So we haven't which it, it prones a question why, so it is. But the other answer to the question is, Colm, that we weren't good enough to win all Ireland's. Like, in the 2005 period, you just take uh, with the year, years I was hurling. In 2005, we got to an all Ireland hurling final, and we didn't get to another one until, to, until 2012. Seven years. And if you go through them teams for the seven years, we weren't good enough. I'll be, I'll be the first one to say, you go down through player per player, we were not good enough uh, as, a, as, a, as a squad to win club or to win all Ireland medals, so like, so it's, sometimes it's easy talk, but sometimes we were just beaten by better teams. But just just on that, Damien, like say for example, all the like Limerick are now dominating on the back of two hundred twenty one um, all Ireland winning teams in fifteen and seventeen. Like because you see huge players, great players coming out of those teams. What's coming out of the Galway underage teams? Like is there no three or four real standout players, or is it just you know? In general, a good, you know, just a good team from one to fifteen. So sometimes, Colm, to get these players to come through, a manager has to be given a three to four year plan, like to go through. And sometimes that doesn't happen in Galway that you're given a three or four year plan. Like I remember this Limerick team, right? And I remember them going down playing Kilkenny in um, Nolan Park, and like they were at the at the start of their the, of this team, like this, and like they were far from the. The finished article, but them lads needed to be given time and needed to be built out. Sometimes that doesn't happen in Galway. It just doesn't. And the truth of it is, I suppose, in the last two years, we, we Galway do have a very good team at the moment, and they've underachieved. Like Galway should have won the Leinster title last year, they didn't. And against Dublin, myself and Conan, and I, I was convinced that Galway would beat Dublin. You know, being straight up with you, and like they just didn't turn up. They were extremely disappointing. And hats off to Dublin; they put in a, a phenomenal performance, but. Yeah, I suppose to answer the question again for you, Colm, is there's some of these players not given the time uh, that's required. Like, you take the go under 21 or go under 20 the other day, so they did, against Kilkenny. And I've seen a lot of top-class hurlers there. A lot of hurlers that I like the look of, uh, the way they hurl. I like their sharpness, their application, everything. And I'd be hoping in time that these lads would be given a real chance. But uh, when I say a real chance, you actually have to stick with these guys for two years. Yeah, exactly. I think maybe... It's down to the fact that in recent years, anyways, they're back winning four minor All Irelands in a row, yeah, yeah. which is a record. That when the senior team is so strong, minors and that you know they don't get that chance to come up yeah. into it. Like sometimes, like I see it in my own club, you have good minor teams and good under sixteen teams, and if they don't make the breakthrough, because they're 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 regarded as the top players in their team, and you know, and they're treated that way, and then they can't make that jump into a big big team. It's sometimes difficult for them, and then they're not pr- developing on as the players they should be, you know. And I think the point that Damien made about chopping and changing managers is a, is a huge thing. Like uh, every manager nearly has their style, and the, and they like certain players, and they don't like other players, and they like the way certain players play. And a new man will come in and 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 could freshen things up, get rid of three or four lads, and those three or four lads, you know, mightn't have developed yet, you know. And they might have been just getting used to things and getting used to that kind of level of hurling and level of training and level that it needs. And all of a sudden, they're not they're discarded because. Because uh, we're going a different route. We, we want to play yeah. this way, or you're not not fitting into my kind of system. And there, there are three or four players that could have flourished under 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 the current manager if he was still there. So, look, it's probably a mixture of things with Galway. Like, but I think, geez, in, in Dublin we take even one uh, one or two of those. Uh, 
All Ireland's at the minors and, and get, uh, try and hold on to all of the players. You know, I'm even thinking of like Tyrone in football who won two, mi- two, they lost the minor All Ireland to Leash, won the following year, and then followed up with two under twenty one All Irelands. And those two teams backboned three All Irelands. You know, and then but who when was you, the manager? Yeah, I suppose Mickey Hart yeah. the whole time he came yeah. up along with them. Yeah, maybe there is a point. Um, maybe there is a point on that. Mira, get your thoughts on on uh, Dublin Connell. Obviously, the COVID thing hit them hard. I saw Chris Crummy talking about it was a massive shock. The last thing you're expecting to hear when you woke up on the Saturday morning, you know, was that news. Lost Don O'Donnell early. Like, yeah. they were really up against it. Yeah, look, I, I suppose you could say everything that went wrong, like that could go wrong, really went wrong for them, on, on, especially on the start of the morning. I can only imagine the chaos with, the, with, with Matty and his management team when they found out, like, what the hell are they going to do? I would presume they didn't really want to start O'Donnell, I say, if they had a full kind of contingent of the squad and, and then when this happened they kind of were going look he might be okay you know he might just last that you know yeah. he might need to sprint or he might need he might you know, obviously he wasn't 100 percent so no one only probably wanted to start every player would want to yeah, try and that, give it a that, go that's normal the problem is now he'd be missed he's probably missed it for the rest of the year yeah well you'd like to you'd like to hope that if well certainly if i was a manager there i'd say listen if you even do you even think that's coming at you or you feel it just pull it because there's another day here this is not about yeah. just all today so i would hope but the, I would hope that he'd be okay, that it was just maybe he just thought it was going to be Adam again and, and he just put his hand up. But like two or three minutes into it, it was very early to, to could, do that. And you could see him doing it. It was the very first ball he yeah, ran after yeah. TJ Reid. It was just off camera. You could kind of see him starting yeah, to limp. Yeah, it was probably the first time he sprinted. Yeah, and, and very I, first time. I know myself from hamstrings, is you never really try it. You, no. You can get through fitness tests and you can bluff everyone. But it's when the ball breaks and your man is gone, you have to react and you yeah. just do it. And then all of a sudden it's, you realise it's not it, ready. What it actually is, is the mm. minute you stop thinking about it. Yeah. That's the test. Yeah. And that's when you sprint in a match, when you're running after someone and the hamstring is the last thing in your mind. Whereas in the, in the, in the fitness tests, it's you're, nice constant, you're constantly thinking of it. Yeah. So you're doing 90, 92, 93. But it's when you have to chase someone, yeah. all bets are off. And that's oh, when no, it goes. It's a different story altogether. Yeah, it is. Now, I, wouldn't, I never had much hamstring swims. I wasn't that fast. So it didn't make any much difference. <laughs> I would have got through an 80%. But... Uh, look, very difficult for them morning coming into the game. I think they did very well considering all of that. Um, like, uh, I think the biggest loss was Hayes up front. Like, uh, yes, uh, Keno, Keno Callum was, was a loss in defence, but like, the, uh, Andrew came in and did very well. I think defensively, we're, we're really kind of solid enough anyway. It's up front is, is the huge problem. And they just need more out of the forward line. They just didn't yeah. get enough. Um, and they need that threat up there all the time. And look, we obviously had it previously with Rush. He was an option all the time in there to hit it long. And Hayes was nearly taking, in, taking that role now where he was able to run across the line and, and give him high ball in. So he was a massive loss. And more than any of them, really, I think. Um, but... Isn't it a problem with Dublin that it's a Patrick Horgan? Is it, you might say that's na- lazy analysis. But, like, I mean, from 1 to 12, they look very, very solid. Where's the Patrick Horgan? You know, where's the Owen Kelly? Where's the Conor Whelan? They're, that 15 and 13 doesn't seem to be there. Oh, well, look. I, d- I know I, these are special players. They're, not, it's they're n- special talents, yeah. Like, but I think it, if you look at the, the Dublin game, if you look at the so-called leaders that we would have, you know, Sutcliffe played very well. Crummy did very well. Rush was very good. You know, so those lads, Rush and Crummy were in the fours doing really well, doing a lot of work. OK, they're not racking up massive scores, but... Um, I just think that they did very well considering, right? But at the end of the day, they weren't good enough and we, and we, and we didn't win. So like, that's, that's the bottom line. Uh, I just think now they're probably in a situation where they can nearly take the shackles off and, and just go at this now. This is, this is you know, shit or bust now for, for them. Like. So it's like, let's go at this full, full out. And I really believe that there's a massive performance still in this team. Um, I think the players are there. Uh, so, uh, defensively, they're solid. And I think maybe with a few couple of changes up front, they can get a bit more from from what they have at the minute and um I'm looking forward to who they get in, in, in the draw. I don't think anyone will really want to get them. I know psycho- <coughs> some teams will come in and say, oh, geez, I'd love to get that kind of side of draw that Dublin are on. That's exactly what Dublin want. They want that. They want that teams coming in with that bit of complacency. Maybe like Galway did it coming into the game um, and that's when Dublin hit them really hard and um, and I'd say the lads are really looking forward to, to getting out with, with, with everyone that's available. What, what's your take on Dublin... Um that day, Damien. Like, I mean, Keane Boland got a point. <coughs> he had a terrible wide as well. Keane Boland has a lot of qualities. Probably scoring isn't that high. Mark Shooty never felt the weight of the ball and Keane O'Sullivan never scored. One point from the full forward line. Yeah, well, the first, the first thing is you'd have to feel sorry for what happened to them with the whole COVID yeah. cases. And then O'Donnell getting injured. I felt, I really felt sorry for that guy, you know, at full back. But he's actually a great player. So there's, uh, I think their main man and their vocal point up front at 14... 
uh, Ronan Hayes. We have a joke here actually, Colm, that I have a brother called Ronan Hayes. And uh, <laughs> we're in the family, in the family WhatsApp group, anytime Dublin are playing, we always go best look to Ronan today. Now we're, we're delighted you made the county run, you know, like this. But uh, so I won't, I won't forget that name. And it was Ronan Hayes, but he's a he's a big man. As Colin just said, he runs the lines. He's a fantastic strike of a ball, in particular off his left, which he scored a goal against Antrim, which was an absolute rocket. Um, so, like, even to lose your full form, I, I won't like. I felt sorry for Dublin in that regard. Uh, the performance in Galway was admirable. I really mean that. I didn't think they would beat Galway. Hats off them. They they worked harder. They had a better attitude. They gave it absolutely everything. So they did okay. Galway could have scored a couple of goals at the start, but they didn't. They didn't. And Galway and Dublin readjusted and they ploughed on and they won the match. And Matty Kinney deserves a lot of praise for it. Uh, regarding, uh, would anyone like to get Dublin? I would like to you know Dublin, I think, if they can get their house in order. Uh, I, I think Galway can, will, beat, will beat Waterford the weekend. And if I'm doing the maths right, that means that Galway will play a tip. If, unless I'm wrong with my, my own maths. Like this, which means Dublin will get Clare or Cork. And I don't think Dublin would fear Clare or Cork in a what we call a 50-50 game and they could get to an All-Ireland semi-final and they have every chance of it. And uh, Matty Kinney and the boys are doing a good job up there. It was just unfortunate that they lost their, their players and their full-back like this. But if they're all back for the next day, uh, I think they'll give uh, lots of teams a, a right shot for it. Um, we'll move on, lads. What about, uh, obviously Wexford lost last weekend, and you know it's debatable whether Davy's going to stay on with them. And I was looking um, through his five years. Uh, like the record on paper doesn't look great. He's eight wins in twenty-one championship games. Now it has to be pointed out the year his best year, the year they won the Leinster, they drew three uh, of the group games and only won one. So he won one, drew three, and lost one in their best every year you know mm. so that those numbers don't look as bad one thing he didn't beat any team from Munster his record in the qualifiers was terrible his record in Leinster was good uh, beat Kilkenny twice were well able for Dublin <coughs> in the time you know like I mean <coughs> but his his record against in the quali- when they went into the qualifiers lost to Waterford lost to Clare twice and uh, lost to Tip in an Ireland semi-final I, I'm not sure how to look back on it to be honest with you well, like it was a success in the one at Leinster Wexford hadn't won one you know since what 97 yeah. um, do you think you should stay on with them Connell how uh, do you look back on it I think I think they've uh I think you look back and say it was a successful five years that he was there. Um, I think he had his ups and downs, but I think he's brought Wexford pretty much, uh, as they would say, up to, up to the kind of top top table. The, the, uh, they weren't probably really competing, I think, before he came in, r- really. like, uh, And I think he's developed the team. OK, he, he seems to have a certain kind of a game plan and, and that's what he goes with, but it's got Wexford so far. and I, They probably just need... Uh, something really fresh to come in, you know. The, their players are very, really, really good, and they have top top players. Um, I would say, look, I suppose, look, answering your question is, I would say the players are still happy with Davy. I'd say the public are, are relatively in Wexford are, are relatively happy, and they're glad he was there. Um, whether he'll stay on, I'd be very surprised if he does. Yeah. After after his little speech afterwards, and <coughs> um, and five years is a long time with a squad doing the same kind of things over and over again, um, and I'd say. It's something similar to when I think when we had daily with five years, like some lads want them to stay in because it's it's nice and consistent and and everything and, and you know what you're getting out of them. And some other lads want change; they just want something different, you know. And y- you might get the the so-called players that aren't getting enough of a run. They might swing it and say, "Look, we need something different here. This isn't good enough anymore." And then you'll have the older lads maybe that are loyal to Davy to say, "Look, you know, he's brought us this far. You know, it, it, there's a chance if we get someone else in that we can go back even further." You know, so yeah. Uh, look, my own thoughts on it is I think he's done he's done a good job with them, um, and I probably think it just needs a fresh voice and it's just a freshen that extra team up a little bit, and it could be the best thing that they ever need. What, what what's your take, uh, Damien? When you look at it, they were a Lee Chin <coughs> and Connor McDonald wide that did never hit ever again for making a Leinster final. And when we saw what happened Dublin, they could yeah. be sitting Leinster champions waiting <laughs> waiting mm-hmm. with Limerick for everyone to, you know, kill each other coming through yeah. the qualifiers. I think I think myself he's improved them. Right, I right. I think he's improved Wexford Hurland. I think he's brought a standard uh, to Wexford Hurland. Liam Dunn was over them. I I, they, I don't think they were ever going to win anything majorly under Liam Dunn. So when he came in, when he came in, he brought an air of excitement to the whole county. And I I think he has improved them. 
Um, his game plan system, I think he's going to have to twig that himself, right? I just can't understand it. I understand about getting men behind the ball and men around the ball and working through the lines. But I've seen Wexford too many times poking the ball into the full forward line or hitting long-range scores. And whether they get them or whether they don't get them, there's nobody inside in the full forward line, which I cannot understand. They played Galway in a, in a Leinster final, uh, I think it was two or three years ago. Conor Cooney uh, went right. To, and I don't know how many times the ball went into the full forward line and the Galway goalkeeper would come out and there wasn't anyone of 30, 40 yards of them. Uh, against Clare the last day, I don't know how many times I watched the, the clips on it and there was no one inside in the full forward line. And then when he did pl- decide to play Chin and McDonald inside in the full forward line, they, they cause a little bit of havoc with a route one ball to 14, which I have always say there's nothing wrong with. Um, re- regarding will he stay, um, I think he'll want to stay. Uh, I don't think there's a job out there for him. That's being honest. Uh, the only possibility of a job for him was Dublin. I think Matty Kinney might have bought another year for him by beating Galway. So I do. And this whole COVID thing would have helped him in the Leinster final that he was unfortunate. He now has an opportunity possibly of playing Cork stroke clear to get to an All-Ireland semi-final. If Matty Kinney doesn't stay in Dublin, I think it's been lined up for Eddie Brennan. So I do. That's why he's in the club scene in Dublin. That's These are just my own predictions. <laughs> I think uh, Davy Fitz would have been rumoured for the Dublin job if it came up. But now, they're after by Matty Kinney there. So I think, myself, that Davy will want to go back because I don't think there's a job out there and I don't think he's able to stay a year out of Hurland and stick with the club scene because the club scene is way too slow basically club scene is basically a September job so it is so I think Davy Fitz will want to go back again with Wexford some of the players will want him back they'll be very loyal to him as Conan said uh, he'll also try refreshing up his squad and get in different trainers and, and all this but the long and short of this um, uh, column is if, if he doesn't play two at least in the full forward line uh, his patterns of his game plans aren't working and you need to have two at least in the full forward line which is what uh, Limerick do every year watch Limerick they have men behind the ball but there's always two men inside in the full forward line at all times near to goal yeah I'm not sure why David is always tipped to come to Dublin there's no way he'd be getting it up well I was wondering I was going to say that to you there he, I don't think Dub- Davy and Dublin would be a fit Dublin like to keep them in a little bit more low key than, than yeah look, I'm not sure if Manny's bought another year or not but uh, he's been there a while but look it, it, the case I, I don't think uh I don't think Eddie Brennan's ear- earmarked for the job in Dublin. That is for sure. Well, he's heavily he's heavily earmarked for the job, so he is down our way. And the rumor was that when he left the lease job, he's is a is he what is a cooler? He's over, is it? Yeah, he's over cooler. Yeah. yeah. So this is just the rumors, the rumor mill, as we call it, <laughs> Jay rumor mill. Like this, and he's heavily he's heavily tipped. But the the rumors was if Matty didn't do well this year down our way, was that it was they were going looking at Davy Fitz, and Davy Fitz was on his last year with Wexford just. We might as well talk it out, but as I said, then Eddie Brennan has gone up there and he's not gone up to Dublin hurling. Uh, we know he's going to see the club scene, but this, but I don't think Davy is going to leave Wexford because I don't think there's going to be too many teams that are going to want him, So he and he won't be able to stay out of the game. Yeah, that's that's called putting one plus one equals four, um, probably <laughs> rumour. <laughs> but that's, but that's, but no, that's listen. the J, that's the J. No, it is that's a, a rumour No, it is. It is. I heard the whole thing with Eddie being lined up for the Dublin job, and that's yeah. just a logical step from Cooler to Dublin, you know. And I heard, well, look, I heard Eddie. What successful? Like, well, that's it. Going then, yeah, like, so. yeah. Look, listen. That's just how, how people talk with these things. Yeah. Conal Keeney is meant to be going to be the trainer. I can hardly train myself. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> never mind. Train a team. No, I said train. Train. <laughs> ah, no, I wouldn't be doing that. No, no. No, look. I'm sure. Look. Uh, Ed, Whatever is going to happen, it's going to happen, and I'm sure John Costello will do the right job. He, he seems to always pick the right lads. Yeah, we'll see how that we'll see how that pans out. But last last one before we move on is Kyle Hayes, lads. How do you stop this man? Right, because you're you're a dual player, Connell, so you know how hard it is to stop uh, an attacking half back running at you, coming late onto the play. Is he playing? I was saying on Monday he's playing the position like a football wing back. He's carrying the ball. You never see that. You usually see a wing back in hurling when he gets a bit of space. Yeah. I'm taking a shot. Yeah, like he. He's the player every team would want to have. Like he's absolutely outstanding. His performance the last day was it was unbelievable, and his goal just probably summed him all up as a player. Like he's able to do everything, and he has the he's so big and strong, and he has the pace to keep going. As he was going for that goal, you were just going keep going, keep going, because the easy thing would have been just to pop it over the bar. But look, um, uh, unbelievable player. How do you stop him? I don't really know. To be very honest, um, 
you try and double team you try and keep the ball away from his wing but he, he seems to have a license that he can just you know if, if he feels that he wants to move into the forwards he can go to the forwards if he feels he wants to drift into the centre or drift to the other side he seems to be able to do it and have the pace to get back and mark like so if you're going out marking a fella like him and let's say I'm wing forward and he's wing back I'm nearly worried about him I'm like oh yeah I can't let this lad go up here and have a few scores because I'm gone if that's the case and so you, you have to try and get on the ball obviously and, and, and turn him but you turn him and he has the pace to catch you like in it's very difficult, to, but like, there's not many players out there like that. And you can't hit him because he's a huge man. Yeah, you probably get a, a bigger, a harder hit back. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. The, they're well able for it. Like, it's it's like the some of the Kenny players in their in their pump. Like, they were lo- lovely, stylish hurlers, and people were saying, "Oh, get stuck into them, and they might." Like, they were well able to dish it out. They and they do dish it out, and I'm sure Kyle Hayes is the same. They all dish it out, but like, you put they put you don't see all that because of other stuff that they do. So they don't get to that level without being able to mind themselves, you know? Yeah. I, I, I suppose you noticed his finish, Damien. I didn't notice it on Paddy, until Paddy Staple and told me on Monday. He kind of batted that with the hurley upside down. I didn't see yeah. it. The camera was a, a good bit away. So I, the whole the whole thing came from basically Kyle, Kyle um, Keen Lynch caught the ball. And if you watch the piece of play, it was a complete train session. So Keen Lynch caught the ball and he offloaded immediately. It was like a little drill. And... Um, Kyle Hayes took off on a solo run. Now, if you watch it, right, I'm sure uh, Liam Sheedy would not be happy with Brendan Maher. If you watch the clip, Brendan Maher came across to close him down and he sidestepped him. Yeah. Now, he, now Liam Sheedy would have been preferred if Brendan Maher fouled him or done something to him. But he just sidestepped him and left Brendan Maher in the wrong direction, right? And then who was the call was running after him? Um, Dan McCormack. McCormack, yeah. Dan McCormack, right? And I know what this is like, right, in my latter years, that Kyle Hayes just took off and Dan McCormick was after him. And as Kyle Hayes was solo and Dan McCormick was running after him, and it was like a case, I know while it was going through his head, I'm not able to catch him. I'm not able to catch him. <laughs> and the run was, I'm not able to catch him. He's getting away from me. And he's the more the run is going, Dan McCormick is going, someone meet him, please. I can't catch him. <laughs> yeah. I can't catch him. But he then if you watch it, Colin, he just jinxed to the right. And he done what we call a bat. And that has been practiced, I'm telling you, in the training sessions. That Now, it wasn't a full-on bat. You'd often see um, Patrick Horgan scoring a goal like it or, or someone, right? But it was a full-on bat. And the power that he got behind the ball was un- unbelievable now, right? But, and next thing, when he scored the goal, he runs straight back. So he's, his fitness levels are phenomenal. He comes from a farming background. I sold him a car. He's actually a lovely fella. So he is, right? But he comes from a farming background, which has a different level of fitness, right? But Colm, you're saying, how do you mark this guy? Like this, my opinion is, you put a smaller guy on him, right? I, I had an ex- experience, I marked Sean Og in the 2010 uh, league final, so I did. And I remember John McIntyre coming up to me and telling me that I was going to mark Sean Og. And like, I was here, John, I'm five foot seven, five foot eight. He's six foot three or four, like how? And I had to get into my head, how am I going to mark him? I, I, if, I, if I was someone saying, how would you mark Kyle Hayes? I'd run him all over the park. I'd run him all over the six forwards position and I'd keep him moving and I'd have to do a job with him not getting the ball, but I'd run him all over the park. But also just to say, you're saying he's allowed to run up the field into different positions. Credit has to be given to the likes of Donovan that's at midfield and in particular in the second half, he's kept in the half back line uh, situation in around that area, which allowed the Kyle Hayes to plow forward. And when he did, he rotates into number seven position to fill the area. So he goes, and that's all training, it's all tactics, it's it's all a game plan like this. But the way I'd mark Kyle Hayes is I'd run him all over the six forwards and I'd keep him moving. Yeah. Maybe he went with the bat because he thought Dan McCormick was closer to him and he didn't realise that Dan had probably, you know, in his own mind gone, I'm not catching him halfway there. Um, before we move into the matches, lad, Shane O'Donnell, Jesus, this lad's gone. He's gone for the he's gone for the year, Damien. What's the actually I'll show that what, what's the talk? No, Claire? no, no. Brian Lohan. The talking right? clear is that no one knows why he's not playing. It's all to do with this concussion. It's a concussion, uh, yeah. Thing, obviously. But, but like, if you do talk hurling in the showroom here, it's like, if his name does come up, the thing is like, where is he? Like, or, you know, it's, so whether he got an awful bad concussion. Um, he did. No, he did. I, 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 he did. He did, yeah, Damien. So it, it's. Brian Lohan. But Brian it's Lohan's looking that way. It's, it's. It's looking like his season is, is over, yeah. Yeah, his season's over, apparently. Brian Lowen said he's making progress, so we're just hopeful that he'll be okay, yeah. regardless of hurling, just in his own life that he'll be okay. Jesus, he must have taken an awful mm. an awful hit in training before that Kilkenny game. There's no doubt. Because I remember... I got concussed. 
Colm, I got concussed one time myself. Just It only ever happened to me once, right? Uh, and I ran into Andy Smith, a good friend of mine. We were playing clear in a qualifier up in Salt Hill, right? And I didn't think I was concussed. Uh, obviously, this right. But I will never forget the next morning, the headache that I had. Uh, I just, I just never forget the next morning the headache that we were doing a recovery session, and I just went straight to training and went straight over to uh, Doctor Dan. So I did, and I just, I just never forget. So I can only imagine if he got it, what what it would be like. I was grand, like the following day or the two days later. But geez, like to get a, a concussion like that, it must be. And to have blackouts and has it must be very very serious. Yeah, and come here now, just that it's, that it's crossed my mind. How is it you've sold Kyle Hayes a car, but you give Tony Kelly one for free? No, we well number one, it all, it's all to do with your clear, your your clear. Um, Backtrack quick. Yeah, Backtrack. Tony was from clear. So it's, all do, it's all to do with clear. So it's up, it's up to someone in Limerick if you want to give Kyle. I, I've no doubt. I've no doubt about it, Colm. That. Uh, if uh, Kyle stays doing what he's doing, that uh, he'll be going around with a sponsored car. So maybe it's one of the Limerick dealers that uh, need to sort that out. But um, and, and I, here, I will here, say as well. Come here. When did you sell him the car? Because I'd imagine Kyle Hayes, the profile he's at now, is surely driving around a sponsored car. I sold him. I, I I sold him two years ago, and I told him that story as well. The one that I told you that the year Galway we were in the All Ireland, I was sitting beside this lad from Limerick, and I told your man that Kyle Hayes was my cousin. Do you remember I told you that story? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> Kyle scored four points that I was from play that day. And uh, your man turned around to me and he goes, Jesus, boy, your man is doing the business today. <laughs> like, you know, and so what's called it? But yeah, he came up. Yeah, I, I sold him a car. I got a photograph uh, with him because I told him that story about cousins. So I think he put it up on his Instagram page. Delighted to buy a car for his cousin. It was like, it was like big and small. They're five foot seven versus six foot four or whatever. But uh, no, he's... Um, he, 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 and that time, Colm, I think he was only like 19 and he was a huge man. Yeah. So he's after becoming a bigger man. And like, it's not often, Colm, that you get a lad as big and as mobile as that that can get around the park with so much skill levels. So it is, but no, he's, he's, a, he's a brilliant hurler. And just to say as well uh, about that uh, Munster final, it was the best performance I ever seen from a hurling team. They won in the second half in the first 20 minutes. The best I ever seen. I, I don't remember many Tipperary players winning 50-50 balls. The Limerick players won nearly every ball. Like, and you go through it, Parig Maher, you go Brendan Maher, you go Jason Ford, uh, Noel McGrath, Bubble, Shamie Canlon, uh, Barrett cornerback. They didn't win a ball in 20 minutes. They scored one point. It was the best performance I've seen from a team in the first 20 minutes of, of the second half that I've ever seen. They were phenomenal. Yeah, it was. It was one of those performances where you're just going, holy yeah. shit, what's happening? Yeah, like, 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 there were 10 points, 10 points down, 10, 10 points down, Tip scored one point up to that water break and Limerick went two points up. So like basically it's like a 12 point uh, turnaround. Unbelievable. You, you'd wonder, I was watching it and like, it, it was an unbelievable performance with Tipperary in the first half and you seen then going in at half time, Sheedy with, you know, clapping his hands and you know, it looked like that. Was there a need for that? Or was that was that, or is this hindsight going? I you know, it's with, all it's it's all for the television. With well, with look, Sheedy, did you, was there a need? Or like, I could imagine Limerick players walking in, watching Sheedy celebrating with his team, or like, I mean, I I'm not saying this after the fact. I remember watching it going, that, that's a bit unusual. Yeah, no, it was unusual, and I wonder in the dressing room where the Tipperary saying, we're we're showing these lads now. You know, we're the hurlers and we are dominating Munster. Like, let's go out and destroy them now in the <clears> second half. And look, and nearly kind of complacent a little bit. While in the other side of the dressing room, probably Limerick were nice and composed and calm. And like, we didn't even really hurl there now. Let's get into. Let's get a bit more physical. And you seen what they were doing. They think they have this one. Yeah, yeah. So let's go and see. How, let's go and see how good they really are now. And look what happened. The game is over after whatever twenty minutes into the second half. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure, John Kiley. Change column. Colm, the big change for the second half, just the difference between the first half and the second half, what changed with Limerick? The big change was that there are two midfielders set in, in, in literally in the half-back line. They literally had a five-man half-back line. And that was the big change. Jason Ford had six points from play scored in the first half. He had the room. He had all the room of, of Cork, yeah. right? And then when he got the ball, he was 15, 20 yards. That stopped. Once, once they tightened up that area, they were able... And then it's, it's like getting uh, English went off uh, injured, Right, uh, your man come on at full back, and then uh, what you call it come on as well. Uh, the corner forward, Galan, um, yeah. Galan and Dan Morrissey. Galan, came on. They, yeah. they, and they were they were the, the Morrissey yeah, and Galan, and like uh, it was a big, it was a big, uh, it was a big 
chance to take not playing Galan because he was their, he's their free taker. Like even if Galan isn't motoring, he he's a nine out of ten free taker, not a ten out of ten. It's a it's a big chance not to play your free taker, but that's what, that was a big difference for me. Uh, Limerick played five across their half back line literally in the second half, and they tightened the whole thing up and they built from there. I, I actually felt sorry for Mulcahy coming off because the whole thing nearly when Galan came on the whole thing changed the ball was going in really nicely into the corners and, and like, uh, Mulcahy wasn't getting very much anything and then it's the same old story if things aren't going well we'll, we'll take off the corner forward there and we'll, we'll sort it out then and nearly that's what happened yeah but uh, uh, he gives them more presence in there than Mulcahy though cause like yeah he's more of a threat of a goal threat yeah he is or yeah. Like even a bit longer ball maybe you know he, yeah, he, he can is, win yeah. his own ball but uh, what, what I love he, watching he, 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 He's a he, he's a great horror gland, and even I can't get over the size of him. Do, do, do you remember the time he pulled across Barrett? That's when I that's when I know it's the size of him, the physique of him. He went in for a throw in, so he did with uh, Brendan Mara. He's a way bigger man. Like Brendan Mara's not a small man. He's a huge man for a corner forward. No, he is. I've, yeah, he is, I've yeah. interviewed Galan. Um, he's a hu- he's a huge man. He's absolutely huge. Right, are we view- Connell, I'll no, no, let you have the last I, I word here and then moving on to these matches. One point in, like, this the, is a the, preview best, show, not a review <laughs> show. The, the, the best thing about this Limerick team is... is is Keen Lynch's touch? It is just unbelievable. Like he, he never seems to miss touch it. Uh, every time he's in in any kind of ruckster, he is always getting the ball coming out, and he takes some serious abuse and never does never does that and just gets on with the game. And I, I just love yeah. a player like that. And and I, I just yeah. watching him all the time. Even if the uh, the ball is up to the end, you lo- I just just love watching him because his movement and his just his skill is is. I haven't seen anyone like it. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah, and it, we were saying on Monday he showed another side to him which was a kind of a warrior battling kind of side. He took a lot of punishment yeah, off did, Dan yeah. McCormick and yeah. kept uh, coming back. Right, listen, we'll leave it there. We'll have to stop at some stage, lads. We'll come back and we'll preview the two games of the weekend, the three games of the weekend. All right, lads, so the first big one of the weekend is Water for Galway. It's in Semple Stadium at 2 o'clock. It's on Sky. Sky got the double header um, on this one. So two good ones to get. I'll start with you, Damien. Like, what did Galway have to do here? Like, I mean, do they, do, do they say this was a freak result? We didn't perform on the day. Our defence was solid. 118, you'd take that any day of the week playing in a championship match against any team. Our forwards didn't work on the day. We have a brilliant forward line. Like, do they need to change things or do they need to trust that this was a very, very bad day at the office which <clears> can happen teams? Now, when the, you said, what to go, we need to do. The first thing you need to do is win the match. That's, that's the first thing. And I, and I mean that because I, they definitely took the game uh, for granted against Dublin. Uh, so they did. And, and Dublin deserved their win. I want, I want to go on record saying that. And their game plan and their work rate, their application and their attitude Dublin showed that day was phenomenal. And it was brilliant. And that's why they won. So I think Galway oh, need to go back to a little bit of basics in winning the dirty ball. Uh, they need to start trusting each other. They need to work back for each other and everything. Uh, regarding the forward line, like I, I think I was on the show here one day and I, I read out the scores they've got over the last uh, couple of league games, yeah. which was unbelievable, and they didn't do it the last day. So they'd want to just up their performance and work rate. This is what they'll all start talking about. I don't think he's going to mix it up, uh, you know, as in chain, toss the whole team up and down uh, like this, you know, but uh, there's certain players that if they're not going well, I do find they do start oper- you know, changing them into different positions. I think there's certain, there's lads in the line. I'd like to see Jason Flynn getting more of a run on this Galway team. He's around a long time. I I think he's a he's a very, very good hurler. He's there since I was there since 2013 and he still hasn't nailed, uh, nailed down his position. You know, there's a lot of chopping and changing. Niall Brooks and other lad is on and off like this. So, um, I, I think they just need to go back to to working hard and getting it, playing it through the lines, and also just hitting it directly into the full four line because they have the players inside. You have Connor Whelan, you have Kulkanen inside. These lads want the fast ball and they're able to get scores like this. I wouldn't mind seeing Joe, myself personally, playing more at the edge of the square. I just, I like, I like to have a vocal uh, player at the edge of the square and have a have a target man like that. But I don't think they're going to change things uh, too much. He's, that, I think there'll be a whole work about. Their time will be work rate and and getting it right on the day. Well, it may, maybe that'll be it, uh, Conlon. When you see when Limerick were able to fix it at half time against Tipperary, they deserve a lot of credit from that because often mm. when you're you're you know off it, it's hard to get back on it. And Galway couldn't correct it at half time, for example, and they were they were clearly off it against Dublin. And again, Tip and Dublin get credit for that, but at the same time they were off it. Yeah. And Galway being one of the top 
two or three teams that we all thought couldn't correct that. So that's a problem. Yeah, it's probably a little worry, I suppose, to how easy the Galway forwards were contained, maybe, you know, but maybe that's down to Dublin tactics and, and that they did very well. But I think he's probably Damien's right. The, the management will just go back and say, we need to up the work rate, get the intensity going a lot earlier and take the easy scores if they're on. Now, obviously, I think against Dublin, they had four or five chances for goals and, and, they, and they didn't take them. If they got maybe two or three of them, it would have been maybe a different story, but they didn't get them, they didn't get them. So I think uh, the best thing is, 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 is not to change everything and chop and change positional and bring in different lads and everything and I hope that works because you're always, from scratch yeah, always had a relatively okay league like coming into it and they've been getting massive scores like so okay let's just park that Dublin game and, and go back at it and, and work great at intensity and that's where we go and let's take the easy scores and work ourselves into the game and, and, uh, and let the game and let the game kind of flow a little bit and I, I, I see you Damien's point of having Joe inside it's, it's a good option to have all the time um, is he more beneficial in there than he would be out around the middle I'm not sure like but um yeah, get the ball in as quickly as possible to Concanon and, and to Weedle and, and let them do their stuff and, and everyone else working, working, working really hard and, and if anyone's not working, they're getting called ashore fairly quickly and I suppose that's the line I would have, I would take with that. Yeah, uh, Davy Burke came on for, for Tuhi after 34 minutes against Dublin and uh, Nyland came on for Loftus in midfield. I imagine uh, Nyland went into the forwards, David Burke then went into midfield instead of Loftus. Do you think, that, do you think th- those two will start the next day, Damien? Yeah, I'd say there's a huge possibility, yeah. Like, David Burke, <clears throat> David Burke's a right good player. Like, the, the big disadvantage with David Burke at the minute is they're looking at his age and they're saying, he will he see out the game? So, basically, we are going to ask themselves there, are they going to start with David Burke and maybe take him off after 45 minutes or are they going to bring him on? Personally, I always like the, to be starting like this and I, I used to always hate this, you know, premeditated changes like this. Like, if, if just for example, if David Burke was playing like this and he was playing midfield, and after 45 minutes, he's flying it, or he's still going well. Like, there's no need then to take him off. Like this. And sometimes I do think, and I'd love to know the answer to this question, right? And it's a, maybe a question, Woody, that you can ask some of the managers. How many players are taken off because of this box thing that's on the back of their, on their, back of their shoulder blades? Do you know, that's telling you your heart rate and you're, you're maxed out. Do you know, that, do, do you know the, whatever you call this the box? GPS, yeah. It tells you how much. GPS. I'd just love to know how many players are taken off that they're telling your heart rate is <clears throat> is too high and he's maxed out, he can't go any further. Or like if if you were the top, like you take uh, Rory O'Connor, right? Last year he was taken off, so he was, and uh, a lesser player was brought on, right? So for Wexford, like if they put him in corner forward for five minutes and let him get his heart rate back down, or let him, do you know, just would say get his breath back, could you brought him back out again and he'd he'd have come into it more, uh, back into the game more. But yeah, Loftus, Loftus more than likely will start. So David Burke, I think, will start as well. I would like to see um, Jason Flynn. I, I'm a fan of him, so I do. I think he's a good hurler. Maybe he lacks a little bit of confidence of time, but I, I like to see him starting as well for Galway. Um, I, I, I don't really know. Like It's a bit like Conan said there a minute ago, is it an advantage getting a break or was it a disadvantage? I, I think for Galway it was probably an advantage to, to should go into this game... Uh, uh, a little bit fresher so they didn't water because I, I, I guarantee you water will tell you that they earned every bit of that game against Leash the last day uh, and I think one of the, some of them lads will be fairly tired the, the, just quickly on the GPS thing that kind of bothers me I, remember, I think it was Colin Boyle used to get taken off regularly for Mayo and he, he seems to be playing really well my thoughts on it if you're playing well and your GPS stats are on the wane you'll stay on until you start play, making mistakes. But if, if, if you've gone out of the game and then you, you see that the GPS stats have dropped, well, then, it's, you know, you, you would add up, maybe that's the reason. And then, you are you know, you, you might speed off, bring it, speed up yeah. bringing them off. I think it depends. Uh, uh, Colin, Colin, we played a league match one time or a challenge match one time. It was the first time I ever put on one of these GPS, that I used to call it the male bra, right? And what to call it, uh, I knew well, I knew well what was going on here. So I, I put it on, but I didn't plug it in. <laughs> <laughs> that's, didn't, that's, 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 the, that's the secret if any of the boys uh, have any worry about. Uh, put it on, but don't plug it in. And were they so trying to tra- it's a fault. Were, were they trying to track you as you were getting a bit older, trying to tell you you weren't covering they were trying to tra- they, were try- they were trying to track everyone and see what these were like, you know, and, and all that. But as I said, uh, you were putting on the male brand. I, I didn't bother plugging mine in that. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Colin? Look, I, 
I think there's there's there is a role in this in the kind of modern area for that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I think the, a manager needs to trust what he's seeing. Exactly, that's my point. And I think these lads that come in with these uh, the GPSs and all these stats and everything have too much of a say. And any of the teams in the la- that have been involved in the last, let's say, five years, their their roles are, are they're getting, in my opinion, way above their station. They're getting involved in stuff they shouldn't have, uh, and coming down at half time and coming in the manager's ear saying, "Oh, his 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 speed runs are less, or he's not covering the same ground as he used to, or last, you know, he's he's dipping, he's dipping, he's dipping." Like, give the man a give the man a break. Like, you, you could be dipping, dipping, and. You, I put it like this: You could put it be in the game and score one six and might run a whole pile. Yeah. And you could be in the game and running around like absolutely ninety, like a headless chicken, just to get. And this does happen. You run around running to keep your GPS up because you don't want to be the one to say on the on the Tuesday when it's up on the board. Oh, you you only covered uh, like six k. What's the story there? Yeah. You know, you're not able to do it anymore. You know. Yeah. I'm like, well, I didn't need to run six, nine or ten k, did I? Like, you can't. There's no arguing with these lads because the manager just see mm. it's black or white and they say. Well, look, in the last couple of games, you only ran, you know, I'm not sure if you can actually play that position around that middle. You know, we might need to put you in or when we get to 50 minutes, I think it's time to take you off. Uh, well, I could have just banged in t- like two or three goals yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Now, OK, that's an extreme two or three or goals. If, if one of your leaders, for example, say there is a point in the second half where you are a bit tired and you could make two runs and you don't because you say in the last 10 minutes, I'll be yeah. needed that. And then you then one of the leaders might get two points late in the game. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, I mean, that they, he would be whipped off if you were to believe the stat. He hasn't made two, you know, or a run yeah. there. What are you bringing on? You're bringing on, a, let's say, a hair that's going to run everywhere for, for the sake of these stats. Like as a manager, you need to know, OK, let's say Damien Hayes, he's inside there now. He's a goal threat. Like he might be absolutely knackered, but if the ball comes in, I know he's going to do it. Whether I bring in a young lad or a fresh lad and he's going to be running everywhere and the stats are going to be through the roof, but yet he can't catch the ball. He drops the ball or he mishits it. So uh, your manager just is, 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 look, does Brian Cody look at these stats that much? Though? My, I, I love going back to him. I would say very, very, not, very, very little. He probably knows about them and he might use it to confirm I'm, I'm taking him off because he's not playing well. And yeah. you know what? Your stats actually don't uh, agree with me because should, of that. Should, should those lads speak when spoken to? As in, if the manager yeah, radios yeah. up and says, he says, Absolutely. right, Damien Hayes, Woolley or Connell, it doesn't but look these, like these, he's going that well. Would you say, here, wh- wh- what's, you know, what's his stats but, like? And then find out to confirm what you think. Yeah, but you need a strong manager. Like if, you, if the manager's in any way kind of weak and he likes to delegate and let everyone have their opinion, like... I've seen it where these lads are giving these presentations beforehand and saying your your tackle count is this, that and the other. And uh, like these lads aren't even selectors or nothing. Yeah, but yeah. they have more of a say than anyone. Uh, like, <laughs> I just, it, it boils me up to... And these lads never played. Well, what, you know, what, all they do is go on the computer and they let these stats and they might compare it to a, a Tipperary team or Kilkenny team or, or, or a professional outfit. Like, you need to have... you need to. Uh, look, if I was ever the manager, I'd, I'd listen to these lads, but I'll take it in and, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll disregard it if needs be. Yeah, yeah. And if it's if it's useful, I'll use it. If not, I'm not going to be looking for it in the middle of a game. I'm not going to be looking for it at half time. If if you're looking at a game, you know who's not playing well, and you know why he's not playing well. You don't need a stat lad to come in and tell you, oh, his his high speed runs are down now in this last ten minutes. I don't care. Like I I'm actually the manager here. I'll sort this yeah. out. Like you don't need this stuff at that time. Yeah. Are already down because there's no ball coming in. Well, yeah. You know, is that a midfield problem? Well, now we're back to the corner forward <laughs> getting taken <laughs> off. Poor Graham Mulcahy. <laughs> it's interesting. We'll move on from that there. Um, it, what, what about Waterford, um, lads? I suppose, in a way, uh, Damien, Waterford are going to have a similar setup to Dublin. They're going to drop Irla Daly back, kind of covering the full forward right. line. They'll have someone else kind of standing into centre back. And Galway didn't manage that too well against, against Dublin. Yeah, I know. Look at Liam Cal, Liam Cal, I think this week they'll be doing a whole a lot of uh, video analysis and they'll be looking at stats and all that sort of thing. They'll, they'll do very little, just a little bit of sharpening up because that, that, that game would have taken a lot out of them because in fairness to Leash and to Cheddar, I think they gave it absolutely everything, to be fair, you know, and Cheddar the fierce hurling man. He, he takes fierce pride, like, you know, so they wouldn't have been simple, but uh, I, I, the only fear I'd have for Warford the next day, this is just a fear, is that they'll run out of steam because that game will have taken a lot out of them like this. But I don't think they're going to change their tactics an awful amount. They, they'll do a lot of hurling ball. Um, your man, De Bourke is an awful lot. Jeez, he's an awful lot. So he's, right? But um, I, I think always should be good enough to beat them. Well, they should be. And if they're not, they deserve to be out of the championship. I'll be the first one to say it. But I actually expect this to be a very, very good game. There'll be a lot of running. Walter bring an awful lot of running to the 
running to the game, so to do. They pick off lovely scores, so to do. Um, I think they'll want, they'll want to make certain they'll get their matchups right, so to do. But um, I think Watford will be hugely motivated for this game. I actually expect it to be a really good game between uh, Watford and Galway. And then Galway need to go with the blocks early, uh, to, you know, try to put confidence back into their game. But um, yeah, I think both teams will kind of know their, their setups. Uh, Watford know theirs, but. Um, I expect it to be a, a right good game of hurling. Yeah, I think Waterford definitely have forwards that can hurt them. Like Stephen Bennett can pull Dahi Burke everywhere from number 11 and Dahi Burke probably won't want to go into those areas and, and the same with his brother Shane at 14. He'll pull McInerney all over the place yeah. and Desi Hutchison. And like Liam Cal said, he said, we're looking for movement and energy and tracking and running and I'm sweating there in the sideline. He was talking about the energy levels weren't there. They'll be there. I don't think Galway will enjoy playing against Waterford. I, I think it. I think it'll be a pretty close game. No, I think. I think it will be. I think the Leash game is interesting. It may, if I'm wrong, I think Waterford were trying players in different positions. Were they not? Were they? Were they trying? Like Morn was wing forward. Yeah, he went back. You know, wing and, forward. and Austin was up full forward. I think he's picked 14. I think he might have played in midfield. Listen, it's impossible to say after Sunday game highlights. The show does nothing really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look. I don't think That's either team. Before. The Sunday game, the Sunday game is getting worse and worse. They're showing less and less of the matches. Yeah, yeah. It, it is difficult. You're only getting a, a quick summary. You're only getting the kind of the, the good scores, and then that's it. It's very hard to to understand exactly what's happening. But look, I don't think either team will fear each other uh, coming into this. Um, I think uh, the last day after, uh, with Conor Prunty back uh, for for Waterford is a huge plus, and I think Jamie Barron got a couple of minutes as well, so that's a huge plus as well. Whether they where they have enough now for for this big game, it's hard to know, but um, it'll certainly be. I'd say I, I I think this will be the game of the weekend. Yeah, I think so. You're going for Galway, Damien. Who are you going for? Conor? I'm sticking with Waterford. You stick with Waterford. Yeah. yeah, I'll say an extra time win for Waterford. Right, we'll just uh, throw it. <laughs> and just to say, if Waterford, if Jamie Barron is back for Waterford, as in. Starting and he's he he he's an unsung hero on that team. Just yeah. to say, yeah. he's a phenomenal hurler. So if if Waterford have him from the start and he's motoring, uh, I still think Galway win. But he he's a key key player for Waterford. Yeah, he's the engine for them. So Claire Cork, this is in the Gaelic grounds. Like I said on Sky as well at half past four. Like I mean. There's no doubt here, Connell, that Clare are the battle-hardened championship team at this stage. Like, they feel like they've, they've played so much. They've only yeah. played three games. Cork have played one. Like, Clare have to be in a better place coming into this game than Cork. Oh, definitely. Like, I think in a squad when you're winning, it, there's no better feeling. And I know they're playing game after game, but that doesn't, it doesn't really bother a squad. I think if, if you're not getting any major injuries, you're not really training during the week. You're just recovering and, and, and having a chat about what's coming the next week. So, I think that's great. Uh, the more games you get, the, the better. And, Look, it's it's great. All we seem to do is put on them all the telly now, and Claire always seem to be playing. I think that the, there's nice hype around it, um, and that they're getting uh, with this Brian Lone. Like Brian Lone, I think is not getting the per, the praise he deserves for his tactical uh, awareness and and his. Like if this was Davy or if this was uh, Sheedy, you know, it'd be all over the place saying, yeah. "Oh, look, these lads are this lad's unbelievable. Like, he's a magician." But Brian Lawrence just going about his business, nice and nice and quietly, and uh, he's getting the results and and for fair play to him. And what will he do this weekend with, with Tony Kelly? You know, who knows? And it's it's exciting to know what's going to happen. Um, but uh, yeah, they seem to be the, the team of the year so far. Um, and and this weekend, uh, the the only thing I'd say about the Claire, Claire thing it was it was impressive that. Conlon was relatively quiet and Tony Kelly was relatively quiet and other lads just popped up and, and they got the result that they needed yeah. um, relatively comfortably so that, that's that's all good for Clare Tony Kelly was followed by Rec wasn't he and Matthew Hanlon I think picked up Shanahan because he wasn't going to be I, I think Tony Kelly will go back into full forward line this weekend because Damien Cahillan will probably pick up Shanahan yeah. and then Tony mm. be on one of the two corner forwards who aren't that big and I think Tony yeah. could probably go to town in one of the two of them Damien Yeah I would expect them I would expect uh, Tony to line out in the full four line. So I think they'll see when they go through their, their video analysis that they're getting more out of Tony inside in the full four line than they would. But they'll also allow him after time to rotate going in and out. Whatever, Shanahan will be full four because he's an anchor there. So he's, and he causes problems. Even if he's not scoring, he's causing problems with, with breaks. So this, um, I think uh, Claire will... will I, I just have this feeling they'll start uh, David McInerney the next day. I do it uh, wing back. So I do um, Rory Hayes, a cornerback. He's becoming one of my favourite hurlers at the moment. So he's absolutely loved the way he hurls. I love the way he rides the ball and he just goes direct one straight out the middle. So he's sold with the ball. He'll throw the ball over the bar. I want to let you know as well, he's no re relation of mine, but he's a right good surname, <laughs> right? Here, come here. Will he, pick, will, he he pick, will he pick up Patrick Horgan? Would he be suited to Horgan? Like, Horgan wouldn't like to follow yeah. him when he comes tearing out with it. 
Yeah, well, that, that's it. He, he, I expect him, he'll be given a man marking role, but uh, no better man, as I said. I just love the way he hurls. He said, no nonsense. So it is, and he'll go up the field, and when he gets the ball, he'll turn his man, he goes direct straight down through the middle. He'll give a hand pass, whatever. Um, as you all know, I'm, I'm fierce friendly with Sean Tracy, who's the trainer of the, of the Clare team. Like this, he said they're one of the most honest bunch of players he's ever trained. That, that was a direct quote from him, like this. He says, they're so honest, what you see is what you get. And the likes of you're saying, the, um, um, Brian Lowen. Like, in fairness to Brian Lowen, didn't he have a great championship last year, even though we all spoke about Tony Kelly. But, like, he got the best out of him and he got them as far as he could. And this year he's doing the same thing. And as Conan said there, you're, the, if it was Davey or Liam Sheedy, you, you, there'd be a lot more talk about him. But the whole thing is, I find Lohan's a little bit more private. He's not mo as much into the media hype like this. But I have to say, I do love him on the sideline. He's like a lad that's just going to explode, even when you're interviewing him. If, you know, have you, he was asked the last day, like, over the controversy over, you know, the... The game previous, have you know how have you reacted? And he just goes, ah, oh, yeah, we just moved on, we just moved on. It's just the lot. He's wait. It's like a lad is wait, waiting to explode. So no, um, Clare and Cork will be another great game. So it will, and I think Clare are on a are on a run. So they are, and and form speaks value of everything. Well, that's it. They'll both kind of play a little bit similarly. Coleman will try to drop off as a centre back, and Conlon yeah. will try to drop off, and they'll probably play two men inside yeah. on either side. Yeah. A lot of teams playing similar tactically. The one thing for Clare, like I mean, I I agree. I think what Lowen has done as he, he's improved so many of those players. He's a, done a very underrated job. Mm -hmm. Cork have a bit too much pace for them. Is where Clare haven't beaten Cork since the All Ireland final two thousand and thirteen. Yeah, look, the only thing with Cork is probably their consistency is, is probably going against them. Uh, you know, getting a couple of performances back to back. The other thing is, is I, know, I think in the last game for Cork, Hor Patrick Horgan didn't score from play. No, he had a nightmare. Now, yeah, but, so but does their when you saw what Limerick did to tip, does that Cork performance, other than those two goals just before half time, they were well able for Limerick that day? Ah, look, it's hard to read into it. Like, you know, you, you could say you could say that, like, but... Um, I think yeah. Uh, look, there is a lot, there is a lot in Cork, Cork's favour. Like we, we we went on here before about their puckouts. Their puckouts relatively nearly worked for a lot of the game against against, yeah. against Limerick. Um, and then there's a lot, you know their underage is coming really good in, in Cork again. So Cork Cork, I'd say, are, are kind of bubbling underneath the surface. They're looking forward to this game and hoping to hit them hard and hoping to run Clare and hoping that that Clare won't be able to uh, contain their pace. Obviously. Um, but I wouldn't be too. I wouldn't be too sure. I don't think. Of an, obviously, this is Clare's fourth game and and, and Cork's second. I, I wouldn't be too sure that you'd be able to run the legs off these Clare lads. You know, you you can't underestimate championship games and wins. That just gives you that extra bit of confidence going into these, and it 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 galvanises the squad. And everything seems to work really well. Uh, and, and I, I think uh, Clare have have, uh, have have a really good chance against Cork at the weekend, and, and I, I would tip them to to beat them. Right, okay. What, 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 one problem for Clare would be Dara Fitzgibbon, Damien. Like, when he takes off, I don't see Colm Galvin or Malone having the legs for him. Like, I mean, how do you plan for Fitzgibbon? Who, you'd <coughs> almost say, how do you plan for Kyle Hayes as a wing-back? Dara Fitzgibbon's doing that just from a little bit further up the field. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, would you put Dermot Ryan on him from, as a, you know, wing-back? It's, 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 it's possible, but it will be spoken about. So if, if he takes off... the Brian Lohan and the management team will speak. That you have to stick to him. You have to you have to make these runs. You have to track him. It's as it's as simple as that. And if he's making the runs, around the core players like you're they, the one thing they'll bet you they'll say you're accountable for your own man and you have to mark him and you have to do a job. It's as simple as that. Regarding the core game plan, I have to say sometimes it absolutely frustrates the living lights on me. So does that? Like I think there's always two or three passes too many, you know. And and I I you know for Jeremy O'Sullivan that's involved in that setup, I often do love to know. Deep down, what does he actually think? To, would he love it if the boys just hit the ball straight into the full forward line to Cadigan, to Horgan and all these boys, where these boys could actually get onto the ball? And I just think there's way too many passes. The full back gets the ball, he has to hand pass it to the cornerback. The cornerback solos, he hand passes to wing back. The wing back is the centre back. The centre back hits it to the midfield and then he hits it to the full forward line. Like, there's, there's about three or four passes sometimes too many. And that's the most frustrating thing about... Uh, core curling at the moment for me where they could go with a direct run of maybe three passes to a full four line so it's but um, yeah I, I think it'll be it'll be a very very interesting game you, as Cohen said you can't be championship fitness but then Cork are just going to go into this game a little bit fresher and uh, it, it, it'll be a, it'll be a funny one but I'd be, hope, I'd be hoping that Clare can continue their run
Yeah, they could put Paddy Fitzpatrick on Dara Fitzgibbon and then put either Colin Malone or Colin Galvin to wing forward or something like that. Like, I mean, that might... I think Dara Fitzgibbon needs to be man-marked. I think that's a mistake a lot of teams make because the midfielders generally don't really mark each other. That will get David McInerney onto the field. Maybe I'm just throwing, I'm just throwing that out there. Who do you yeah. think will win this one? Uh, Claire. You think Claire I, I think Claire. It? I think that just the, <clears throat> the number of games that they've had, they're, they're, as you said, they're battle-hardened and they get a lot of confidence from the last number of games and I think... Tony Kelly not playing particularly well yesterday. He's he's going to be due a big win, as you could say for Patrick Horgan the other side. But I just think Claire have a, have a little bit little bit much. And look, I, I, uh, I just think probably Cork haven't uh, haven't had enough championship games. That that's going against them really at the end of the day. And and, and Claire have so I'll, I'll just I'll just tip Claire. What about you, Damien? Yeah, Same I'm going to go for Claire. But I do I do expect Cork to be <clears throat> extremely motivated, really up for this game. But um. No, I'm going to go with Claire. Yeah, OK, I'll go for Cork um, in that one, lads, just to mix it up and keep it keep it uh, interesting. The other big one of the weekend, lads, is Leash and Westmeath. It's in the relegation match. So, like, I mean, you know, it's good for both counties, obviously, to get this one played. Um, I think it was supposed to be before an All-Ireland semi-final. Would have messed up Club Hurling in both counties. At least yeah. they're done this weekend, whatever ha- whatever happens. It's hard to know what happens here, Connell, because, like, I mean, you know, Leash have had a more attacking style against Antrim and performed really well with that attacking style against Waterford. Westmead are coming off a Joe McDonough Cup win. You saw the boost that gave Leash that year, you know, against mm. G. I'm hoping Westmead are drinking for the week. You know, they probably won't know modern players. So, like, I mean, you don't know, are Leash... They both hurled at the Division 1 level. That's why it's a Division 1 relegation match. You know, Westmead have dangerous forwards. How do you see this one going? Yeah, look, a very, very very close game to call. Um, I, I think Westmead are probably... Are, are really need this win. I think, obviously, look, Leisha, Leisha obviously need it as well. But I think for, for Westmead to really progress and take that next step in... Uh, and they have some seriously quality quality players. They're just not getting the recognition that, that they would. Like Leash are getting a little bit of recognition because they had a couple of good up and down performances in the league this year. But Division One hurling, where it's all all about, you need to be there. Whether you're playing Lillian McCarthy later on, you need to be competing at the, in in the Division One league to, against the top teams to really progress and bring on players and and and, and to keep at that level. And look, I really think that they nearly nearly should both be in it, like to try and make make hurling yeah. better rather than putting one down. They'll probably dominate down there they're against both- Kerry. They're both in the Leinster Championship, uh, thankfully, yeah, next year anyways. Yeah. No, that's a positive. That is a positive. But I think for Hurling itself, it, you need to be giving these <coughs> teams not a, not a help or a chance. Just just let them compete with the other teams, you know. Uh, that's yeah, like Dublin were at a stage where we needed to compete with these kind of teams. We have to get up that ladder. You're not going to get better competing against teams your own standard all the time or a bit less. So it's it's that's that's vital and that's not going to change now obviously but um going back to the game who do you think is going to win look i probably would you'd have to say Leash have turned their season early around in the last couple of weeks that, in their performances and i know that i think i heard that the players approached cheddar and wanted to change the, the kind of the style that they did after after the defeat that they got against uh, against wexford and it seems to be working for them like it and they have serious quality players to to be able to do that and it i don't know why it took so long for them to try and persuade the management to to move from being so defensive to, to attack and when they have the players because as I said a couple of years ago when they played us they were they were super up front and we really couldn't we just couldn't contain and we just and once they get a run on you it was very hard to stop that um, but who do I think is going to win I, look, I'd, ha- I'd have to probably tip uh, Leash a little bit just on the basis of the fact that the last couple of weeks that they, they seem to have just changed things around and and, and uh, they're 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 they seem to be coming onto a, a, on a good bit of form at the minute and look I, I'll tip Leash but I just. Uh, I'd like both of them to be involved next year, really, but ultimately it's not going to happen. Ho- um, Leash have home advantage, obviously. The Leash bench the last day was Kieran Comerford, who came on and scored a goal. He came on for Willie Dunphy in the first half. James Ryan came on. Aaron Dunphy came on. John Lennon came on. Matthew Whelan came on. Now that Leash are getting their players back, see that? Like John Lennon was the best, uh, a brilliant sweeper for Leash that day yeah. against Dublin. Yeah. Uh, play outstanding in that role. That's a very strong bench. Do you know, Westmead, I think Westmead have a good team. You know, they've, they've brilliant, some brilliant forwards, David Glennon and Killian Doyle and, and Niall Mitchell, who was so good the last day, and Tommy Doyle at centre-back, and they have uh, Greville in midfield and Angus Clark wing-back. They have a good team. I think Leash probably have a, as good a team, but they'll probably be able to bring a, a bit more off the bench, uh, Damien. Exactly. I, I think the Leash, the Leash bench should be uh, a bit stronger than the Westmead. I'd be hoping the Westmead uh, celebrated their uh, Joe McDonough Cup salute because they deserve it. And I hope they celebrate because it, that's what's all about winning silverware and winning medals and hopefully they enjoy their, their win. I think if, if Leash 
play on the positivity of the way they did against Waterford. I think they should be stronger. I think they should be better. And uh, I'm going to go for um, a leash win on this one. I, I think they should be strong enough to win this game. Yeah, I'll go for a leash win as well. Right, lads, we may leave it there. We've gone way over time. We have a football show here to do. So we'll leave it there. We'll be back on Monday. We'll review all these matches. We'll talk to you all then. Good luck. Yeah.